repeated warnings. Don't go into the park at night in Gucci shoes with Rolex diamonds, Sassoon hair. Wait till morning lets in its light. Each bush will sneak shadows ready to fight, maim you, grab all your riches there. So don't go into the park at night. Trees give no refuge. Cops won't pull their weight. They are avenues away, cars idling where morning will first let in its light. Don't wander those paths, for fright will haunt you every step when you're aware of all that goes on in this park at night. Stay home, lock doors. You'll be quite safe, not out in the dark. Or don't you care that as morning at last lets in its light how close disasters struck? <coughs> Wake up, look, look at that sight. Blood smudges the paths, bodies black bagged everywhere. So don't ever go into this park at night. Wait till bright morning lets in the light. I'll pick it up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is a youth poem. Only when young. They'll call me brave to ride my bicycle against this traffic that doesn't expect me here. To dare this highway that must with the sun lead west to big mountains. I weave, weave through the whoosh of cars that speed back by me, honk honking, wishing east. Their rush gusts my hair, each strand dances. I pedal, pedal, coast downhill, feet on the handlebars, just one hand. Pedal, faster, 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 stop! Get off of there. Come home, be wise, you foolish boy, she'll cry out if she saw me, but I'll call back, only going where the sun goes, Ma. Look, no hands. <laughs> the next two poems are inspired by the Korean War, which I was a draftee in. And the first one, <laughs> First one, I just want to explain, it, it's um, the, s the speaker, in the main speaker in the poem is the sun in the sky. And the last stanza is the person he's talking to, responding to what the sun is saying. The sun's attempt to conscript. Life's great, it said, and so I say, a wealth of riches to be had, therefore don't piss it all away. Be eager, bright, smiley, hey, feel joy. I'm useless to despair when your hours have gone bad. Life's great, that's what I say. Stop curling up in bed morose, mooning through the day. There's a war on. Enemies are at our gate, raving mad at us. Rise, don't piss all life away. I'm here, beaming through your bay window this morning to buck you up back you up. Young lad, life's great, that's what I say. So get off your butt. Join the forces, heavy load your guns the way gore-loving soldiers must. Shout, kill the bastards. Be glad when blood gushes, not pissing your life away. <laughs> A wealth of riches? This? Has that clueless son gone crazy? No, no, my golden one. I'll not be had by your heart foolish talk. Life's not great, whatever the hell you say. Better to lie in bed morose, pissing it all away. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the... Um, next poem is called M1. M1, uh, for those who don't know, is the name of a rifle 
that was used in the army in, in training, this is in 1953, in training and in uh, combat. M1. I am your rifle, soldier. You must hold me close. Sleep with me. I'm like your wife. At night, in some roadside ditch where you have found a place to rest and close your eyes, I must lie nestled against your chest, your limp hand draped over my trigger that is waiting for your touch. Be good to me in the pauses of war. Oil, rub my parts. Oil, rub inside my barrel. Hold me high above you as you wade waist deep through icy water. Never dare to drop me in dirt or mud, for no rust, no filth of any kind must find me. In return, I'll be good to you. When through rain and fog you see those far faint figurines moving toward you across a field with sharp spurts of fire, you must aim me, pull my trigger, watch those figurines topple over like so many rows of swans you once pinned down in that country booth at your country fair. Then trudge on across the field, stumbling against those mangled shapes strewn all around among red rivulets in the grass. Step over them. Do not look back. And though your eyes will be dark, circled, glazed, exhausted, you must rejoice. Rejoice, soldier. For I am the wife you will have just made love to. I will save your life. Oh. I'm going to read two more. If I can find them. Oh no, I'm going to read this one. This is a love poem. Ooh. One of the very few I've written, but anyway. Called, Perhaps We Should Try It. Let's spread out a blanket, have a picnic tomorrow. The sun will shine as it has never shone before, our weatherman tells us, and he should know. We'll eat peaches and plums, drink whiskey too. The sun that shines as it has never shone before will warm us as it glows down deep to our bones. Beaches, plums, good whiskey will warm us too as we hold sad hands, feeling no pain. The sun's warmth as it glows will call out, Hello, bones, I'm here to celebrate you, flesh and all. That's it, hold your sad hands and know no pain. Now kiss the heat on your lips and do not stop. Yes, we'll be there to celebrate our flesh and all beneath where buttoned clothes have kept us in hiding. The heat from your lips will think, I hope you don't stop. As it heaps up my lips, no thought of stopping. Until, um, but, until buttoned clothes peeled off, we're no longer in hiding. Our weatherman will tell us, and he will know. All pain gone, and all sorrow. So let's spread out a blanket. Have a picnic tomorrow. <laughs> and I just have two more. And this is um, a, a poem about old age, which I think I'm fully qualified <laughs> to write about, <laughs> other than the youth one. Uh, no elegy. So many gone, soon many more will find their time, step by step descending, until the stairs they stand on drop into that deep empty. No light, no cellar floor, the door above shut tight behind, voices murmuring in the rooms beyond, too busy to hear them stumble part way down. 
as I just stumbled, rising from my chair to snatch back the morning paper from my awkward, fallen from my awkward fingers. A tiny item on the final page, at the bottom, actor, 90, dead, a week ago, whom years ago was dubbed the voice that had a hundred trumpets in it. Full blast, it could hush an impatient foot-shuffling house, hush the ushers giggling in the lobby, even echo in the avenue, avenue outside, while I, his acolyte on stage, the waiter say, drank in his every breath. The way he could weep on cue, each night one teardrop left glistening down his cheek, takes talent, my boy. The way he could swish flap a cape, swashbuckle a sword, how he would raise his arm and hand, palm out in front, sweep it left to right as if he would wipe away the theater roof with big waves of emotion. Now, no more. No f survivors except his name, which if you choose to look one day you'll find in books crammed into upper shelves, back room where the dust is. I fold the paper up and put it down. Ah, enough of that. He lived beyond me after all, behind tall, thick walls, no doors, windows, not even a chink. I had no talent. Habits, yes, an ability or two, enough for mornings, evenings, and yet enough to keep me here in this under room where numbness tingles my feet, enough to push me from my chair once more shuffle me across the floor to those stairs and up step by step where that thin line of light beneath that door tells me ah there those murmurs are i reach out stumble reach reach again not thinking why except that i must bend somehow to touch that light however faint it shines Wow. One minute. I've one more. I got one, one minute. I got one more quickie. I got one more quickie. This is a light one. First date. <laughs> Beautiful, he says to the hurried waiter who has filled his coffee cup to the exact level he demands. After a loud, that's it. Beautiful, he said earlier when he, his awaited steak arrived, blood rare just the way I like it. Be beautiful, he bellows now at the TV screen above as a ball is thrown swish into a basket from the other end of the court. I guess that's his mantra. Beautiful, she muses. <laughs> but what does he think of me? Beautiful, he croons lovingly at the chocolate mud cake just gobbled down, goo on his lip, and end to the meal. Soft words now purring from his mouth. Want to see my waterbed tonight? Get it on, maybe, baby. How's about it, huh? Why, she ventures, am I that beautiful too? Nah, he answers, flaunting his loaded wallet. Just kind of pretty, but you'll do. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>